Welcome back. So there are many ways that sound designers can attack the sound design on a movie. And typically, on a studio film, there's a team of them, right? There's no right or wrong way, but I like to start with dialogue editing first. And here's why. Number one, I don't want any distractions from my dialogue editing. And so if I'm messing with effects and ambience and music and all this stuff, it's going to potentially make my dialogue sound better than it is. And I want my dialogue to be as pristine as possible. So I do a full pass on dialogue before I mess with anything else. And then number two, we have to set a baseline volume level for our movie. And a lot of things like ambience and effects don't have specific decibel ratings that they're supposed to be at, necessarily, outside of extremes. But dialogue is typically supposed to exist in a certain range, a certain decibel range. So with that knowledge, I can go through the movie and set my volume so it's nice and even, and then when I go through and add effects and everything else, I'm mixing that stuff to ear based on how I've set my dialogue. Does that make sense? So with that, there's a few basic things we need to cover before we jump into the sound design, some terminology. And the first one is decibels, what I just mentioned. So decibels is a way to measure the intensity of a sound. And the weird thing about decibels, at least in our application, is that the ceiling for decibels is zero. So anything above zero is peaked and completely unusable. We're always dealing in negative numbers with sound design. So, and then the closer you get to zero, the louder it gets, right? So minus 10 dB would be louder than minus 15 dB. And then with that, the way we measure decibels in Fairlight is with meters. And there's a whole range of meters that are all giving us, typically most of them are giving us ratings in DBFS, which stands for decibels relative to full scale, which just means it's a decibel rating system with a defined maximum, which is zero. So we've got these meters that are giving us dB ratings in nice colorful graphs and with the actual rating. And so that helps us get things where they need to be. And there's another meter, at least one or two, in Fairlight that measures in LUFs. And we're going to deal with LUFs in phase two of sound design. Now, the other thing I want to mention is that sound waves are made up of vibrations. And each vibration is measured in hertz. And so you've got these ranges of hertz, these frequency ranges that we're going to be dealing with. The human ear can hear like 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, which is 20,000 hertz. And so the, why do we need to know this? Because when we're editing our dialogue and possibly other sound effects, we will be sometimes removing or editing certain frequency ranges that have problems. And so you're going to learn where the human voice kind of sits and just a little more about frequency ranges and what to attack where. Okay? So I think the most important part, well, it's hard to say because everything's important. It's like filmmaking. Every part of the process, part of the craft is so important. And there's only kind of one defined absolute, and that's that everything that we do in the craft is to serve story, to entertain our audience, right? But with that, what's a huge fail as a filmmaker? Distracting our audience. And so have you ever been at home or at a theater and you're listening, you're watching a movie, and all of a sudden you're like, hey, wait, what did they say? That's a massive fail for us, for us as filmmakers. If you pull an audience out of your movie because they can't understand something, what are we doing? Like, why are we even doing this? So your dialogue needs to be clear. It needs to be legible, and I'm gonna help you get it there. So with that said, we're gonna jump into Fairlight and go through a few lessons on dialogue editing. Normally, the sound design team is getting stuff from editorial, right? And the sound designers are more specialized in sound than the editors are, even though the editors are great at their craft. So a sound designer will often take all of the work that an editor has done on dialogue and just remove that stuff. So whether they've added effects or EQ or volume, the sound designer is going to remove that. And I think we should do the same because we're going to learn more at this phase than we knew when we were working on the edit page. So we're going to back up our sequence, remove what we did, and start from scratch. Let's go. So I'm going to jump over to the edit page and just right click and duplicate your sequence and give it a new version number. And then I put something like hyphen sound begins and then double click on that new sequence. So that's what's open. And I would just close any other sequences. Cool. Now jump back to Fairlight, Shift 7, and then hit Shift Z to see your entire timeline. And now we can just highlight all of your dialogue. You could do all of your audio if you want. And then right click, remove attributes. And make sure all of these are checked. 
and click Apply. Awesome. A few other things we need to do. Number one, you need at least three mono tracks for your dialogue editing. You can have as many as you want, but I would start with three. I just name them D1, D2, D3, etc. And they need to be mono. So if you see 2.0 here, that's stereo. You want to right click on it, change track type to mono. Okay? And remember to add a track, you can right click and choose add tracks. Specify just one if you only want one. And then specify the insert position. And then choose mono here too. Now we need to set our faders to the default. So down on the lower right where your mixer is, and if you don't see that, just click up here. And then if you hover your cursor right here on the left, it'll turn to a double arrow. You can click and drag them out. All of these need to be at 0.0, .0 which will be minus 10 decibels. So if they are different, let's get them back to normal. So just double click on the fader control to go to default. Put that back. And then I solo my dialogue tracks because I don't want any distractions. I want to get my dialogue sounding as good as it possibly can. And then we add in ambience and all that stuff later on. Okay, now it's time to actually do this. And seriously, congratulations. You have come a long way to get to the point of editing the dialogue on your movie. So what I do is I go to the very beginning of my film to the first spoken word. So that's no words there. There's some breathing here. Here's dialogue. Now, the reason we can use, and I'm not saying all sound designers do this, but the reason that you can use dialogue to set the overall volume for your film is because dialogue is supposed to hit within a certain decibel range. So remember, we're below zero, right? Anything above zero is peaking and unusable. Dialogue is supposed to hit between minus 10 all the way down to minus 15 decibels. That's the general range. So remember, 10 is louder, 15 is quieter. And then within that, minus 12 is the average we're shooting for. Now a couple notes on that. If you have someone whispering, then they of course can be quieter than minus 15. Or if you have someone yelling, they can be louder than minus 10. But if you have people just in a room, a quiet room and talking a norm, in a normal conversation, you're shooting for minus 12 for that dialogue. And you can see now, if we go through our movie and we set dialogue correctly, then that helps us set everything else, like Foley sounds, music, background ambience, etc. So I'm gonna zoom in here. Now, there's a lot of ways to check the level of our dialogue. We've got meters all over the place. So let's go through our track meters again, but in a little more detail so you know which ones to use. So we've got our track meter. We've got bus one, which is showing a summary of all of our tracks and the control room, which shows a total peak volume. And that sounds great, but remember, here's the problem. When we're dealing with mono, bus one is not giving us an accurate decibel reading. It's due to that pan law stuff. For example, watch my track one over here. No! So it almost got to minus 10. Now watch bus one when I play it again. No! It's three decibels lower, and the control room is monitoring bus one. So this is all out, and we're not doing lusts right now. So this is accurate, and this down here is accurate because this D1 is showing us the same thing as here. However, no. it's kind of hard to gauge exactly where we are. And I can make this larger, but then I lose space on my timeline. Here's what I like to do. There's a couple ways to do this. Number one, you can right click on a clip. I have it mapped to Shift F and choose Analyze Audio Levels. And you want the ITUR BS 1770-4, that's what you want and then click Analyze. Okay, our true peak is minus 10.4 dB, but this is kind of tedious to do. The way I like to do it is with a track meter. Go to your effects and go to Fairlight Effects, look for meter. Audio effects can be applied to tracks or they can also be applied to clips. And so I'm gonna drag this meter to the entire track. In fact, I want this on all of my dialogue tracks. Now I've already added them, so I'm not gonna do that. Let me close that those effects, but you want to drag that to each of your tracks, and then you'll have that box that you can position. Now, I don't have the boxes up, but I have the effect applied, right? So to access an effect that's applied, I'm going to highlight the track, go to my inspector, effects, and there it is. And look, I've got two of them because I just added it again. So I'm going to just hit the trash can on one, and then click this little icon on the right to bring up my meter, and then A2 and A3, and close inspector. Okay, I like them positioned up here to the right of my active tracks. And of course, if you have more than one screen, you can move them to another screen. In fact, with that, let me mention this again. Under Workspace, 
dual screen is really nice for your sound design because you can move a lot of the stuff over to your other screen. Like for me, that's my laptop. And then I have more space on this screen. And then a final note, I know there's so many details, but if you open these up and position them and then go to the edit page and come back, they'll all be gone again, which is a pain. So if you click the little three dot menu, you can choose lock plugin window, which I have selected. So now if I jump to the edit page and jump back, they stay there for me. So you definitely want that. Let's play this again. No! See the beauty of these meters? It shows me while it's playing, but then it keeps the total peak for me to reference much easier. So minus 10.4, that's fine. It's a little over the average, but he's kind of yelling. So let's just leave it at that. Let's check this one. Okay, that's too loud. It got into the red. Yellow's fine, red is peaking. So what I'm gonna do is highlight my clip, open up Inspector. I like to click in the field and drag it left to right. So I'm gonna just lower that a little bit. Okay, minus 9.1, that's probably fine. It's, it's louder than the initial no, which is what I want. I might end up tweaking that a little more, but it's good for now. And keep that in mind too. You definitely wanna dial this in as much as you can, but you're gonna tweak some things later when you do add ambience or maybe music from a composer, things like that. So get it as close as you can, but know that you're gonna tweak later. There is a lot more that needs to be done with this dialogue, but that's what we begin to cover in the next lesson. We're gonna take a look at industry standard tools that sound designers use on movies, probably every movie that you watch. And it's pretty cool stuff. Now a little tip before we move on. You need to figure out where you want your speakers to be at a decibel rating in editorial and then leave them there or go back to that same spot. So whether you're using headphones or studio monitors, figure out on the knob where your sets. One thing I like about this device here because I get an actual number, a numerical rating that I can always go back to because there's, you're gonna have to crank it to hear things or lower it or whatever, but you need to go back to that so that we're not, it's like writing on paper without lines, you start to drift. And even though we have meters, we still need to be hearing this stuff, okay? So just a little tip, hit up the community with questions and I'll see you in the next lesson where we start looking at some pretty cool dialogue editing tools. See you there. <laughs>